Greetings, Leaden Hall family and friends. We do come to you with the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. We pray uh, that you have had a joyous week in the Lord as we are coming into yet another season. Fall is in the air, and we thank God for the change of season. Uh, we pray that you are continuing to stay safe as you are joining us with our virtual worship. We just want to just announce that for uh, the next couple of Sundays, our in-person worship services will be suspended while we undergo a deep cleaning and san uh, sanitation of our sanctuary. Uh, we shall resume our in-person one-hour power services the first Sunday in October. But until then, we do encourage you to tune in to us, share the word with your family and friends, and as always, stay safe. We want you to remember that even while you're away, Still continue to observe the three W's. Wear your mask, wash your hands, watch your distance when you're out and about in public. For we know we're coming into yet another flu season. We want all of you to be careful and vigilant at all times, knowing that even though we're working quickly towards a cure, that we still are not out of harm's way. So we want you to continue to stay safe, continue to pray for one another, all of those who are healing at home and those who are healing in the hospital, knowing truly that prayer does change things. We thank you for your continued stewardship as you continue to give to this ministry and our support, allowing us to continue to do the work of ministry in the neighborhood, providing outreach to all of those who are needing, are in need at this particular time. And we know that we're able to do that because you are continuing to be strong in your stewardship. So again, we encourage you to go online and you can give through our LedenHallBC.org, our church website. You can go to the giving tab and all of the information will be provided to you there. And for those of you who are joining us for the first time, we do welcome you to the viral worship service of the Leaden Hall Baptist Church, and we pray that the word of the Lord will continue to bless your life as we celebrate him in all of his goodness. Let us go to the word of God today. I'm excited on this word today, for we find in the book of Exodus, in chapter 36, Exodus chapter 36, our focus for this day. Exodus 36, beginning at verse 1, we find these words that are recorded. And Bezaliel and Aoliab, and every gifted artesian in whom the Lord has put wisdom and understanding to know how to do all manner of work for the service of the sanctuary, shall do according to all that the Lord has commanded. Then Moses called Bezaliel and Aoliab, and every gifted artesian in whose heart the Lord had put wisdom, everyone whose heart was stirred, to come and do the work. And they received from Moses all the offerings which the children of Israel had brought for the work of the service of making the sanctuary. And so they continued bringing to him free will offerings every morning. Then all the craftsmen who were doing all of the work of the sanctuary came each from the work that he was doing. And they spoke to Moses saying, the people bring much more than enough for the service of the work which the Lord had commanded us to do. And so Moses gave a commandment, and they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp, saying, Let neither man nor woman do any more work for the offering of the sanctuary. And the people were restrained from bringing, for the material they had was sufficient for all the work to be done. Indeed, too much. Let us pray. Father, now we pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart shall be acceptable unto you, my help, my strength, and my redeemer. Amen. Then Moses called Bezaliel and Aoliab and every gifted artisan in whose heart the Lord had put wisdom, everyone whose heart was stirred to come and do the work. Just want to share uh, with you on this day from this subject. Putting in the work, putting in the work. It seems today like everything has come to a stop. When we sit and we look and we observe all the things that we have to endure during this uh, season of COVID, one of the alarming things that we discover is that every day more and more people find themselves on the list of the unemployed. The unemployed levels are just rising and people are just trying to look for a way to move forward. It's an interesting thing about doing work. Work allows us to move ourselves from one level of being to another level. 
It allows us to elevate ourselves, to rise from where we are to where we aspire to be. But the interesting thing is, is that it seems like nothing is the way that it ought to be. I will submit to you that in order to rise, in order to move, even in the kingdom of God, we've got to be willing to put in the work. I want you to understand something that putting in the work is not just a good tagline. And nowadays, it seems like we can offer good taglines. We, we can talk about uh, Black Lives Matter, but are people really putting in the work to bring about change? Uh, we can come up with all kinds of special taglines for anniversaries and celebrations, moving higher in the Lord. But moving higher requires us to do a degree of work. The question is, are we willing, able, and ready to do the work? What's required of somebody who is working in the kingdom of God in order to do the work that is necessary to elevate ourselves not only in service and in preparation and in worship, but also in being able to build the kingdom of God so that we may be able to usher in the word of God to those who have never heard of his saving grace, those who have never heard of his wonderful power. How do we put in the work so that we're able to show people that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you could have asked or think? How, how do we put in the work? What is required of us as believers if we are going to do the work? What we find here in these texts is that uh, it is describing Moses who had received instructions from the Lord. Go back and you read through the beginnings of the chapters between verses chapters 34 and chapter 35. We found that Moses had been going up to Mount Sinai. And while he was going up to Mount Sinai, he had been receiving instructions from the Lord. And Sinai was the place where Moses had come. And eventually, when he had come down, he had pitched his tent at the base of Mount Sinai. When he had pitched his tent at the base of Mount Sinai, we find that the Lord does some things with Moses, the one who is supposed to lead the people in the process of doing the work. We find that, number one, Moses receives the commandments. Number two, Moses receives a commission and then Moses receives a covenant. I want you to understand something that before God calls you to do a work, he'll never call you without first equipping you. Uh, all those who God calls to do the work, he first equips to do the work. First thing that he gives to Moses in equipping him for the work is the commandments. I want you to understand something. This isn't the first time that Moses had received the commandments from the Lord. If you go back into the previous chapters around chapter 31, you find that when Moses went up to Mount Sinai and he sat with the Lord, he had been there for 40 days and for 40 nights. And the Lord had wrote with his finger the Ten Commandments upon the tablets. And when Moses comes down off of the mountain with the Ten Commandments, he had found that the people of Israel had gotten restless because Moses had been away for quite some time. When he came down, he saw that they had made a golden image and had already violated the very first commandment of the Ten Commandments, that thou shalt have no other God before me. Uh, can I just pause and simply say that we can't get restless while we're waiting to hear from God because there is no substitute for what God is able to do. But when God has prepared you for a work and God has given you a commandment, you can't get frustrated in the process. And far too many people who are doing work have to understand that you can't get frustrated, especially those who are leading the charge. Moses was leading the charge and Moses got frustrated and instead of using the commandments to lead the people, he used the commandments and he threw them at the people out of his own frustration. Some people can use authority. Some people can use the rule of law in order to just beat down on people. And Moses, out of his own frustration, had used the law in anger. 
And because of this, he had to now receive a second set of tablets while he was pitched under his tent at Sinai. When he received the second set of commandments, God had also given him a commission. Moses said, I, I, I need you to do something for me, Lord. I, I need to see you in your glory. And the Lord said, no, you can't look upon my whole glory because if you look at my glory, no man can look at it and live. He says, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide you in the rocks. And as I pass by, you'll get a glimpse of my goodness from the backside. Uh, as, as the Lord passed by, Moses glanced through the cleft in the rock and he began to see the goodness of the Lord as the Lord passed by. And can I suggest to you that when you are finding yourselves prepared and equipped to do the work, and sometimes you got to be reminded not just of the glory of the Lord, but just about his goodness. I believe that every now and then we got to be encouraged and it's encouraging to think about the goodness of the Lord, how good the Lord has been to you, how good he has been to you in seasons of loss, how good the Lord has been to you when you've been on the run. I know Moses probably had a whole lot to be thankful for when he thought about the goodness of the Lord, how the Lord was able to keep him safe even when he was on the run from Pharaoh, how the Lord was able to deliver him and the children of Israel through the Red Sea, how the Lord was able to provide for them even while they were in the wilderness. Every now and then you ought to be encouraged when you're doing the work, knowing that the Lord's goodness goes without failing. He received the commandments from the Lord. He received, he received a commission from the Lord when the Lord allowed him to see his goodness. But he also received a covenant from the Lord. The Lord said to Moses, I'm going to use you. I'm going to go before you so that all the earth will see marvels that they have never seen before. And we ought to be confident right now as a church, as a body of believers to know that God is not through. In fact, he has already gone ahead of us and he's laid out some stuff that we have yet to see. But the Bible says that he made a covenant with Moses and he says, I'm going to perform marvels that this earth has never seen. And I don't know about you, but when I take a look at things going on around us right now, we need a miracle from the Lord. When I look at the fires that are ravaging in California, when I look at the floods that are going down in the southern regions of our country, when I look at a, a world that seems to have lost their mind, when nobody wants to believe truth and everybody wants to chase after a lie, I've got to believe that the Lord has a covenant with his people that says, I'm going to do some marvelous things that the earth has never seen before. He gave a covenant to a working Moses. He gave him the commandments. He gave him a commission and then he gave him a covenant. It's good to know that God will not call you to do something without equipping you to do the work. Not only does he equip you, but he also calls the qualified. I, I want you to understand that God did not intend for Moses to do all of the work by himself. Right. And the problem that some of us got is that we think we can pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps. But I want you to understand that the theory behind all of that is that it was meant to say it is an impossibility for one to pull oneself up by their bootstraps. Have you ever tried to stand in your boots and lift yourself up? It is not possible to pull yourself up. You need somebody to give you a hand. Old preacher once said, if you ever saw a turtle on top of a fence, you know he has some help getting there. All of us know that we can't do it all by ourselves. But the Lord has some folk who he has qualified to do the work. But you need to understand something that everybody who's qualified ain't called. And when it comes to doing the work of the Lord, you can't just be qualified, but you need to be qualified and called. The Bible says that the Lord had called by name Beaziel and Aoliab. And the Bible says that when he called them, he qualified them because one, he filled them with the spirit of God. 
And not only did he fill them with the spirit of God, but he also gave them wisdom and understanding. And he gave them knowledge in workmanship. And I want you to know that all of us got something that the Lord has planted on the inside of us. But don't get it in your head that you did it all by yourself. Because some of us know that we are only surviving on his strength, that we are only getting by because the Lord gives us the power to do some things. He gave them all that they needed when he qualified them. He filled them with the spirit of God. You've got to have the spirit of God when you're working in the kingdom of God. The reason why you got to have the spirit of God when you're working in the kingdom of God, because the enemy is always going to be busy and you cannot fight against a spirit. And the Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. You got to have the spirit of God and you got to be able to put on the whole armor of God if you're going to really work in the kingdom of God. He gave them wisdom and he gave them understanding. Wisdom and understanding come from two things. One, it comes from experience. When you've gone through some stuff, you've got some wisdom. My grandmama used to once say, baby, you ain't going through nothing right now, but you keep on living. And the longer that I've lived, the more I begin to understand that the things that I used to think were problems back then, I laugh at them right now. But I'm so glad that I went through what I went through because it's made me wiser and it has helped me and I'm sure that some of you can testify to the fact that you have grown in wisdom over the years. Uh, only a fool goes through the same thing over and over again, for that is truly the definition of insanity. The Bible says that he gave them wisdom and he gave them understanding. He gave them knowledge and in workmanship. But most importantly, he, he gave them the ability to teach. I think it's a failing of the church and it's also a failing of our society and even in our community when we're not willing or even able to teach somebody. You can't hold all the knowledge all by yourself and just think that you're going to be able to do everything. But you got to be willing to share something with somebody else so that they're able to do the work for themselves. There's an old story that I've heard, an old proverb rather, they simply say that if you give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. But if you teach a man to fish, he'll eat for a lifetime. We've got to be willing to teach those how to put in the work when it comes to the work of the kingdom. So the Bible says that he gave them knowledge and wisdom and the ability to teach. Can I just pause and simply say this, that everyone else who had the ability and the desire, whose hearts were stirred, were called also to do the work. But here's the issue that we often have when it comes to everybody else. There are people who are capable, but not willing. You have people who are willing, but not capable. You got people who are both willing and capable, but they're not called. But then you got folk who are willing, capable, and called. Can I tell you why these are issues? Because one, if you're capable but not willing, all you're going to do is frustrate yourself because you don't, you don't want to do it. You got all the gifts that God has given you, but because you are not willing, somebody got to uh, 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 humiliate you or pull you along or, or, or try to make you feel bad just to make you do something. But nobody ought to make you do something or make you feel bad in order to work in the kingdom. You ought to be willing as well as capable in working in the kingdom. People who are willing but not capable end up frustrating other people. In other words, I want to be in everything, but I can't do nothing. And all I do is end up getting in the way because nobody ever took the time to teach me. So I'm willing, but I'm not capable. And so all I'm doing is frustrating everybody else around me. Then you got those who are willing and capable but not called. And they the people who want to do everything and want to be seen, but everything that they put their hands on, they mess it up. I know some of y'all know some folk like that. They got all the skills in the world. They want to volunteer to do everything, but everybody's not called to do everything. And sometimes you find yourselves that when you're willing and capable but not called to do something, it may not always work out 
the way you want to. Oh, but when you are willing, when you are capable, and when you are called, there is nothing that can stop you for the Lord has already filled you with his spirit. He's already given you wisdom and understanding. He's already given you knowledge and work, and he has also taught you how to teach somebody else. So what do you do when you're willing, capable, and called? The people are prepared to go to the next level of work. People are ready now to put in the work. And the Bible says that he calls Bezaliel and Aeoliath, and he gives them the instructions for the building of the temple of God. And this is an important thing because up until now, Moses had to go up on Mount Sinai just to spend some time with the Lord. But the Lord says, no, I'm going to give you instructions to build a tabernacle so that I can come down and be with the people. I don't know about you, but it's something about when we gather together in the tabernacle, when the Lord visits us with his spirit, when all hearts and minds are touching and agreeing and worshiping together, it's something powerful that goes on. And the Lord wanted this intentionally. And so he gave instructions. And he told Moses that I've called Bezaliel and Aeoliab and I have equipped them to help you go in and do the work. And the Bible says the people responded when they found out that God had people who were willing, capable and called. When he had people who were already equipped, who had already received the commission and the commandment and the covenant from God. The people came together and the Bible says that they worked and they did the work. People gave intentionally. The Bible says that everybody didn't bring the same thing. Some bought scarlet and some bought acacia wood, some bought gold and some bought silver. But I want you to understand something that just because you didn't bring what somebody else brought don't mean that you ain't got nothing to bring. For the Bible says that the people brought intentionally and they brought daily that the work might be performed in the temple of God. Imagine this, if you will, every single day that they got up, somebody took some, some yarn that they got from a goat's hair and they spun that yarn and somebody dyed it and somebody brought it. Someone cut down wood and trimmed down planks and brought the planks to the temple and they did this daily. And even those who said, maybe I can't cut wood or maybe I can't spin yarn, but I got a checkbook. I, I, I can write a check. I can bring gold and silver and all the things that the body of Christ needs in order that the tabernacle might be sustained. And they bought them daily, but they also bought them intentionally. Not only did they bring it intentionally, the Bible says that the craftsmen worked intensively. I want you to know there's nothing worse than folk who start stuff and then don't finish. I, I, I used to see a whole lot of people who used to come out and try out for this team or that team and then when they make the team, they get mad, decide they don't want to stay, they want to just take their ball and go home. I've seen a whole lot of people sign up and volunteer to work on steering committees I've seen a whole lot of people raise their hand and say, I'm going to volunteer, I'm going to do this. But as soon as the work starts, they just want to give up. The Bible says that these workmen continue to work intensively. They worked constantly because they had purpose in mind and God had purposed on their hearts to do the work. And when the Lord has purposed on your heart to do the work, sometimes you got to do it even when it's hard to do. Sometimes you got to do it even when you don't feel like doing it. Sometimes you got to do it even when you're tired. You got to continue to push because they worked intensively. They continued to work day in and the people continued to bring daily. And the Bible says these leaders, while they were working intensively and while the people were giving intentionally, the leaders had integrity. And when you're doing work, especially when you're doing the work in the kingdom of God, you've got to have integrity. Now, I know when I first read this text, I probably was just like some of you. I read it and I said, the people did what? 
The Bible says they bought free will offerings daily. So much so that the workers had to stop and say they've brought too much. Now, I've been Baptist my whole life. I've seen all kinds of fundraisers. I've seen penny drives, quarter drives, waistline drives, shoe size drives. I've seen all the thermometers being painted trying to reach the goal. But I ain't never in the history of my being Baptist ever heard the pastor say the people have brought too much. But the Bible says here that the people brought every day so much that the workers said, ho, oh, we got to go tell Moses that the people bring too much. So they go to Moses and they said, Moses, the people have brought enough. We got more than enough to do the work. My God, that's a serious problem that I wish I had, that we got more than enough to do the work. So much that Moses had to go out and to declare to the people, you can go back to your normal routines. We got more than enough. You don't have to bring nothing else. But that's not the part that really got me. What really got me was this question. How were they able to bring more than enough while they were still in the wilderness? Ha, here it is. God blessed them even when they were in a wandering wilderness state. I know somebody knows what I'm talking about right now because it does not matter when it comes to God. God can do the impossible. He can do the improbable. God can do all things but fail. And the Bible helps us to understand that when they came out of Egypt, they did not come out of Egypt empty handed. But here it is. All of what they had wasn't going to get them nothing because they were still in the middle of a wilderness and you can have everything that you think you need but you don't have the presence of God and what they realize is that even though they had gold and riches and animals and all these things that they brought from Egypt it didn't mean nothing if they did not have the presence of God in their life and so they put the work in because they realized that it was pleasing to God to do the work and if God blessed you and God made a covenant with you that he would not, not allow you to see any distress, but he would only allow you to see his goodness. Why wouldn't you want to just give everything that you have to the Lord? The Bible says that they brought, even though they were in the midst of a wilderness and they gave so much that they were able to do the work. In fact, they gave too much. Have you ever asked yourself, do I give too much? Have I given my all? Have I surrendered all that the Lord requires of me? Have I used everything that he's equipped me with? Have I used everything that he has qualified me with? Have I given the Lord my absolute best so much so that he said, you can just rest for a while? If you can't answer that question, and I would suggest to you that we got much more work to do. The Bible helps us to understand that we got to work while there is still day. For the night comes when no man can work. We've got to put in the work. Because in putting in the work, we find ourselves pleasing to God. It ain't always easy work. It can be tireless sometimes. It can be frustrating sometimes. You may want to give up sometimes. But you've got to work intensively. You've got to be willing to give intentionally. And you have to always operate with integrity, knowing that the Lord will continue to bless your efforts and that his presence will always be with you. We're working in difficult times right now, church. Many of us, we're looking at ourselves in this strange wilderness state that we're in right now, where it seems like everything has come to a standstill. 
But I believe the Lord is speaking to us today and the Lord is saying, give that the work may be done. So I urge you today, use what the Lord has gifted you with, what he has qualified you with, what he has called you, that you might be a blessing to the kingdom of God. Because in these times, what we need is the example of what the Lord is able to do. For he will go ahead before us and he will perform wonders that the earth has never seen. But we have to be willing to put in the work. I pray the Lord will continue to bless and keep you even in these times when we can't seem to find what's going to happen next. We're looking for good news, but here it is right here. The Lord says, I will be with you always. And he's still blessing you. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you. For we realize that even in this season, Lord God, where it feels like we're in a wilderness state, that you continue to bless us, Lord, that you continue to keep us. We thank you, Lord God, because we realize that you are the one who has given us skill, knowledge, and understanding. We thank you, Lord God, because we realize that you prepare us, Lord God, before you even call us, and you qualify us, Lord God, through our life experience. We pray, Lord God, that you allow all of those things to come together for those who are willing, capable, and called, that we may do the work of your kingdom. For we know, Lord God, that in this day and time, people are still hungry. People are still homeless. People are still hopeless, Lord God. But we know that when we put our hands to the work, that your name will be blessed and your people. We thank you, Lord God, for this day, for this time of sharing. And we pray, Lord God, that if someone doesn't know what it is to have you present in their life, that they will receive you right now, Lord God, by just simply confessing that you are Lord and God, asking for forgiveness of their sins, Lord God, and receiving you into their hearts and into their lives that they may continue to do a good work. For we know, Lord God, that you're still working on us and that you shall continue to perform it until the day of your return. We bless you and we honor your name, Lord God. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a smile upon you. Greetings, friends. We thank you for joining with the Leaden Hall Baptist Church as we celebrate the Lord through our virtual ministry and our YouTube channel. We pray that you've been blessed through this ministry, and we look forward to becoming connected with you, either through our outreach or through our church fellowship. If you're interested in becoming a part of our ministry or continuing to work with our outreach ministry, we ask that you reach out to us at our church email, LedenhallBaptistChurch at Verizon.net, or you can log on to LedenhallBC.org, our church website, and just leave us a message with your name and your number, and one of our deacons will get back to you as soon as possible. We're continuing to pray that the Lord will allow you to grow. And we thank you again for joining us in our virtual ministry. Continue to pray for us and we'll continue to pray for you. God bless you.